costume for rehearsing. My mom says we should. Is your mom an actress? No, she's just a mom. Well, my mom's cousin Sarah's an actress, and she didn't say to wear our costumes for rehearsing. What's the good being an actor if you don't get to wear a costume? We wear them when we do the play at school next month. What's the feather for? To sign the Declaration of Independence. With a feather? In the play, John Hancock signed the Declaration of Independence with a feather, stupid. You're stupid. You can't write with a feather. In the olden days, they did, because they didn't have pencils or crayons. Corey, is that Cousin Sarah? No, ma'am. It's Earl J. Wagador. I came to rehearse our school play, Mrs. Baker. That later, Earl. Yeah, after you watch Cousin Sarah on television. Is that tonight? Sure. It's going to be our first part. Are we going to watch on our TV set or yours? I hope we watch it on yours. Because you have color TV, and we just have playing. Good evening, Earl. Don't you look just like Thomas Jefferson? I was supposed to be John Hancock. Yes. Well, you look more like Thomas Jefferson. He had red hair and freckles, too. That hair is white. Underneath the white is red. Your mom did a lovely job on your costume. Well, why are you wearing it now? So me and Corey can rehearse our parts. Yeah. Because Cousin Sarah said she'd help us learn our lines real good. Not tonight. This is a very exciting evening for Sarah. Her first part on a television show. Are you going to watch it in color or just plain? In color. Your mother invited us all down to watch together. Groovy. Groovy? Can I put on my costume too, Mom? Groovy. Hurry before Sarah gets here. Now, make yourselves comfortable, and I'll break out a little vino to celebrate. Oh, it's so sweet of you to invite me here to watch myself in living color. Not that I'm not in person. <laughs> Listen, Sarah, we don't get a chance like this every day. Entertaining a real live star? Oh, I'm not a star. Not yet. I mean, my part tonight isn't really the starring part. <laughs> it's only a matter of time. I would give anything to be in Kansas tonight when all the family who laughed at you when you said you were coming to Hollywood see you on television. Uh, you laughed too, Cousin Julia. I did not. When I told you three weeks ago that I'd come out here to be a movie star, you did too laugh at me. I didn't laugh at you, Sarah. What I did was cry. <laughs> here we are, ladies. We'll drink a toast to Hollywood's newest star, Miss Sarah Devine. But later, later. Here's the show. Uh, make it louder, Earl. Police blotter. Authentic case histories from the files of the Cucamonga Police Department. Starring Webb Jackson as Sergeant Weekday, with Morgan Harrison as his partner in crime pursuit. Police blotter. Oh, boy. This is a show that sends my watch commander climbing the wall. Let me show. In 14 years on the force, Sergeant Weekday, I have never seen as grisly a crime as has been perpetrated on these premises. That's it. What's it? We can turn it off now. You mean that was you under the sheet? The victim. Well, the rest is just about how they find my killer. You mean that's all? Well, well, it's a start, Corey. We got bigger parts in our school play. Uh, Sarah, I think that what you had to do, you really did very well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks, both. Julia, did you like my work? Work? Oh, yes, yes. I mean, uh, well, Sarah, you look really dead. And, and that's remarkable acting, considering you're so alive. Well, I'm so glad you're aware of that, Julia. I mean, it's not the easiest thing to act dead, you know. It takes lots of self-discipline and, and breath control and deep concentration and motivation to get into a dead person and make it really live. And now, now that you boys have seen what I can do, let's get started on your part. I'm gonna turn you into the two best actors in the second grade. Never mind. 
Clinic, Baker. Oh, yes, Sarah. I'm busy now, and I... What? Oh, you have? Oh, how great for you, Sarah. Congratulations. I'll see you tonight when you come... Oh, you can't. Corey will be so disappointed. Yes, he was counting on you being at school tonight for his play. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. This is ye old town crier. It is July 4th, 1776, and we are in the city of Philadelphia. Richard Henry Lee of Virginia offers a resolution to the Continental Congress. I resolve that we 13 colonies declare our independence. From England. <laughs> Here is the Honorable John Hancock of Massachusetts Bay Colony. I am president of the Continental Congress, and I will be the first man to sign the Declaration of Independence. It's declaration. <laughs> I will be the first to sign the declaration with my feather because I have the best handwriting. <laughs> Here's Mr. Thomas Jefferson of the Colony, Virginia. I'm the author of the Declaration of Independence, which I wrote. <laughs> when we are all gathered, I will read my work before we sign it. <laughs> the other members of our Congress our button went out of Georgia. Benjamin Franklin of Pennsylvania. Caesar Rotney of Delaware. Samuel Chase of Maryland. Josiah Bartlett of New Hampshire. <laughs> you mean Cousin Sarah didn't see you? No, son, but guess what? What? Cousin Sarah said if you were good in the play tonight, you can come visit her tomorrow. Where? At Century Studio. She's going to act in a movie. Oh, boy! Was I good, Mom? Yes, you certainly were. And tomorrow after school, I'm going to pick you up, take you to the studio in Hollywood. You lucky pup. Earl G. Wagoner was good, too. Wasn't he, Mom? Yes, he certainly was. And I just bet Cousin Sarah will leave a pass for him, too. <laughs> Lights are off. I can let you in. Oh, thank you. What's the red light for? It means they're shooting inside, and nobody can go in until the cameras stop. Not even Mr. Bracken himself. Is Cousin Sarah in there? Yes, she is, and you must both be very quiet. We will. Huh? You can go in now. now. You're just in time. I'm about to do my big scene. Oh, good. Sarah, you look so pretty. It's makeup. <laughs> uh, this is my assistant director, Lem Whaley. I told him all about you. All right, I'll take care of him, Sarah. The prop man is waiting for you. See you later, Julia. Earl, Corey, have fun now. As some gal, your cousin. This is her first job on this lot, and she acts like she owns the joint already. Yes, yeah, she is enthusiastic and talented, too. And she tells me that these two young men here are very talented. Which one is John Hancock? He was. I was the town crier. Oh, well, don't do any crying around here once the camera starts rolling. Come on over next to the producer's chair. Mr. Grant is not on the set this afternoon. Mr. Scott? I'm here, Whaley. All right, sweethearts, let's see if we can knock this off in one take. Miss Devine's ready, Scotty's ready, and if Mr. Stein's camera's ready, let's shoot it. All right, give us a bell, Herman. What? 
All right, quiet, everybody. This is a picture. Roll it, Herman. You in position, Sarah? Yes, sir. Tempo now, Scott. You come flying in there. Ready? And action. I know you're in there, Vanessa. And I know you killed your mistress. If you don't come out, I'm coming in after you. One, two, three. Strange. Now she's dead, too. Hey, help me do that. Cut, cut. It's a fake knife. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Did you brush your teeth? Sure. I brought it so you could feel what's what. I trust you, son. Good night. Good night. Don't I get my good night kiss, too? I'm still sorry about this afternoon. Oh, honey, I told you to forget all about it. We did it again, and I died even better the second time. I'm glad you're not really dead. So am I, Corey, because I've just really started to live. Night. Good night. Good night, Mom. Good night, love. I really mean that. I am just starting to live. After all those years of being nobody back home, I am on my way to being somebody. You know, I'll bet you never thought your plain as a mud fence old cousin Sarah Mitchell would someday be Sarah Devine, the well-known movie specialist. Specialist? I thought you were going to be a star. Well, now that I know what Hollywood's really like, I can see you don't become a star overnight. I'll just settle for a good, solid career as a featured player, doing my thing. And what thing's that? Well, look, there is a man in this town who just specializes in playing drunks, and one woman who just screams for a living, and a little midget who just plays midgets. So I got it figured. I can become the world's best-known dead body. You really think you can make a living dying? Certainly. Until the day some smart producer or director sees something in me that I know is there and gives me the part that'll zoosh, shoot me right straight up to the stars. One, two, three. Oh, she's dead, too. Hey, help me do that. Ah, there you are, Clyde. Just the face we're looking for, huh? Who is it, Kevin? I don't know, but we can find out. I'll call Cass and get the lady's name. It's Divine. Sarah Divine. Oh, I'm delighted to meet you, Mr. Grant. I've seen every one of your films, and I just know that if anyone is going to discover me, you're the one who will. Thank you very much for that vote of confidence, Miss Divine. Won't you please be seated? How? How? Well, shall I sit regally? Uh, awkwardly? I, I mean, what's the part? I can be anything. Just be yourself, Miss Devine. May I present Mr. Clyde... Clyde Porter? Oh, no. Not Clyde Porter himself in person, in the very flesh. Oh, this is too much. I can't believe it. My favorite star of stars, the greatest actor of all times. Oh, thank you, Miss Devine. Back home, I've covered three entire walls of my bedroom with your pictures from magazines, hundreds of them. I'd cover the other wall, too, but there's a window in it. Oh, I adore you, Clyde. Uh, Mr. Porter, Mr. Porter, I worship you. Oh, I may swoon. Don't swoon, Miss Devine. Just be seated. Mr. Porter and I are about to start a new film. Yes, I know. Othello, you'll be a superb Othello, and I'll be your Desdemona. No. Oh, I know. Desdemona isn't a black, but I can play her in whiteface. We're not doing Othello this year, Miss Devine. Mr. Bracken has shelved it. Oh, most lame and impotent conclusion. Please, lady, listen to Mr. Grant. Yes, Mr. Grant. We're doing an original screenplay, and there's a very important part in it that we haven't cast yet. A dead body? 
No. But dead bodies are my specialty. <sighs> we saw yesterday's dailies. You were a splendid dead body. And in only two takes. Did you notice? Only two takes. I would have done it in one take, but my little cousin was on the set, and he ruined the first take. So we... Yes, we printed both takes, and that's why you're here, Miss Devine. That little cousin of yours is exactly the little boy we're looking for. Corey? If that's his name, yes. But Corey can't act. Miss Devine, present company accepted. The movies are full of stars who cannot act. I don't believe it. I do. I saw Corey in his school play, and I thought he was excellent. But he wasn't acting on the screen when that producer saw him. The poor child... What's the difference, Julia? If Mr. Grant and Mr. Bracken and Clyde Porter want him, why, this could be the beginning of a tremendous career for Corey. And I'll be his agent. Agent? Why not? Sarah... I wish you'd make up your mind what you're going to be. First a wife and mother, then an actress, then a movie star, and then a dead body, and now his agent. I just want to be a somebody, cousin, and I want Corey to be a somebody, too. Yes, he could be another Clyde Porter. Before he's another anything, he's going to be Corey Baker. He's going to grow up as normally as he can and get a complete education, and when he's old enough, then he'll decide for himself what he's going to do. What makes you think he isn't man enough to decide right now? Yes. Let's ask him if he wants to be in the movies. Heck no. You mean you don't want to be an actor? No, me neither. But everybody said you were so good in your school play, Corey. And the producer thought you had such a good face on the screen. Just the same. Yeah. Just the same what? And school I was good just so I could get a good mark on my report card. Me too. And in the movies, the director yells a lot. Yeah, it blows fits. And those lights are hot. Me and Corey didn't like the studio. You didn't? No, being an actor is stupid. Oh, now, Corey. You must forgive him. He's only seven years old. Corey, if you don't want to be an actor, what do you want to be? I want to be eight. <laughs> Welcome home. How was your night on the town? Fine. As a matter of fact, we saw Sarah Devine. Really? Where? In that movie she made where she falls out of the closet. <laughs> oh, that was months ago. She's been dead six times since then. Oh. Why aren't you going to stay for coffee? Uh, no, thanks, Len. But I won't wake Corey. Let him spend the night with Earl. I still have to wash my hair before I turn in. Well, thanks for sitting, Julia. Well, turnabout's fair play. See you in the morning. Good night. Good night. Oh, Julia, where have you been all evening? Sitting for the Wagadons. What are you... Well, we tried calling and calling, and when you didn't answer, I was so worried. Calling about what? Did you get another part? Yes, darling. The biggest part of my life, of any girl's life. I'm going to be married. Wow! Is that the headlight of a locomotive or the dome of the state capitol? No, it's my engagement ring. He slipped it on my finger tonight. And it's a genuine diamond. Oh. Biggest one I could find, this side of Onassis. Clyde Porter. In person, but you can call me Cousin Clyde. And from now on, Julia, when you speak of Cousin Sarah, it's Mrs. Clyde Porter. Oh, Sarah! Oh, Julia, you forgot your... Hey! Hey! Marie, come here! It's Clyde Porter! Clyde Porter! They're going to be married? Who? Us! Congratulations! Oh, I've seen every one of your movies! I'm sorry, I haven't seen any of yours. Oh. <laughs> I love the one where you're the fighter, and then you get killed in the ring! Uh, and the... It's just the actor. Yeah, let's go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's my little cousin. Which one? <laughs> Oh, Marie and Leonard Wagadon, this is the Clyde Porter. <laughs> now, let's all go up to my place for coffee. Oh, no, 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 I have coffee made. 